welcome to my show. My name is Susan Rushton, and before I go any further, I need to explain what oleo means. Oleo is short for olla podrida, which is Spanish for rotten bowl, which I just always get such a kick out of. It's a Spanish-Portuguese dish with essentially everything in the world in it. Pork in all its iterations, pig's feet, pig's ears, uh, sausage, bacon, as well as chicken, chickpeas, cabbage, carrots, beans, onions, and garlic, of course, as, as, as I said, everything in the world in it except popcorn and bone marrow. That's one definition. Another definition of oleo is that it comes in between acts of a melodrama. So you might have somebody juggling, you might have somebody singing, you might have somebody doing a skit, and none of it has anything to, anything, anything to do with anything else. And that's why I call, it, call this show oleo, because there's no connection between one show and the other. My guest today is Linda Franklin, Thank you, Linda, for joining me. Linda is deeply involved because she is the founder of Placer Earth Care Action. And if you want to learn more about it, please get her, please email her, linda.franklin92 at gmail.com, or take a look at the website, Placer Earth Care Action, PP oft.org slash P-E-C-A. It's a beautiful website and I think, and I'm very proud of it. I'm, I'm pleased that you've, that you've done this. Linda, thank you for joining me. Well, thank you. And I appreciate your coming and I also appreciate what you do with Placer Earth Care Action. How did you get started with this organization? Well, um, Maybe I should tell you who we are, because that will help you to okay. understand, I think, kind of the background. Uh, we, are a, um, we are an interfaith, nonpartisan, local uh, group of churches and faith groups in Placer County. And individuals. Yes, of yeah, course, yeah. individuals yeah. in those churches and individuals from the, uh, the public who yes. are not part of the yeah. churches. Um, and we are not necessarily a Christian group, but we are faith-based. Okay. And that's because we, we believe that really we have a moral and a spiritual obligation to address the problem of climate change, irregardless of any political agenda. Yeah. And okay. I, and I agree. It's, 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 it's important. It's vital. And it's, right. and it's moral <laughs> to, right. to work about the, the climate change, to work on the climate change. Right, right. And so uh, you ask kind of how we got started yes. or why we yeah. wanted to do this. Well, as you say, we know and we have the evidence all around us mm -hmm. now that we're in a climate crisis on this planet, mm -hmm. our, our Earth home. Our home, yeah. Um, and... <clears throat> some evidence of that, um, the Earth right now is the warmest it's been in 125,000 years. Yeah. <laughs> this means it's warmer than it, we have ever lived in such mm -hmm. a warm planet. Yeah. Um, and it, the U.S., by the way, is, getting, is warming 62% faster than most of the rest of the world, and that's because we're so reliant on fossil fuels. Oh, yeah. Okay. And before our atmospheric rivers that we're all aware of mm -hmm. and the floods we've had, uh, we were, the West was the driest it's been in 1,200 years. Mm. And even now, by the way, we're probably going to be told that we're still in a drought sure. because sadly, so much of the flood ran off into the ocean mm -hmm. and not all of it got into our underground aquifers because we basically haven't preserved the floodplains mm. where that could have happened, okay. could have entered the ground fully. So these are the climate facts yeah. that uh, underlie my desire to do something. And how long ago did you, was this started? 
Compassionate Ruth Care Action? Well, about 18, maybe 19 months now. Okay. Um, and this gets into my values as well, because uh, I was taking a class at St. Luke's, and in the class we read a book about having a habitable planet. Hmm. And um, that's where the author discussed the moral and the spiritual um, obligation that people of faith have to try to preserve, restore, um, and help our, our planet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it really was looking at what are our values. And I know for me my values are... Um, to, to really honor and respect and protect the preciousness of life. Which is which means that we, we have to respect the, 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 the earth. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. Uh, all of life depends on nature, mm -hmm. depends on our, uh, our, our earth. Mm -hmm. And not only human, but we, we share this with eight million other species. And we have a responsibility not to create um, an inhabitable earth that they can't live <laughs> yeah, in either. Yeah, yeah. And of course, you know, human beings, we um, put first, and I love people. I love nature. Um, As and, well. <laughs> and, and animals. And, yeah, uh, yeah. And I think, you know, somebody uh, has, more than one person, has said that most people's first experience of their idea of God or the source or how or, you know, the higher power, something bigger than ourselves, it comes out of our experience of nature mm -hmm. because we have an innate ability to appreciate nature. Okay. And so um, so those are the values that I feel that make this so important, and I'm sure my partners in this organization yeah. would say something similar. Right. Okay. And so you have two regular meetings per month, right? Right. And what are they? And where, so, when are they? What and when? Right, <laughs> right. Well, so the first meeting is the first Sunday of every month, and we have it at um, the Auburn Congregational Church, okay. which is at 710 Auburn Ravine Road. Up the hill. Yes, yeah. okay. exactly. Yeah. In their in their fireside room. Okay. <clears throat> and, and those are what? What, what? what do you do then? So those um, are... Um, there are meetings where we try to have, we have speakers, we have presentations, we sometimes have authors, we'll have experts in mm -hmm. different areas to do with climate change. And um, some of that we'll have on Zoom, or maybe we'll have um, in um, YouTube conversations. But we uh, show these and then we'll discuss them uh, with our group. Okay. And uh, that's at one fifteen on that first Sunday of the month. Okay. So just to let you know, our, our coming meeting will be, we're having Jonathan Wright, who is uh, the, who is the Auburn City Director of Community and Economic Development. Okay. And he's going to speak about a project called Imagine Auburn. Mm. So it'll give us an opportunity to talk about how we'd like Auburn to be. Okay. So so that is that is on the first uh, Sunday of February. Right. right. Okay. February 5th, I and think And if is. you miss that, you can always go to the, the one in, in March or the one in April, the first right. Sunday of, of every month at the at one fifteen at Sunday, no, at the, at the Congregational Church off of Auburn Ravine. Right? And I should say, we actually uh, show all of our programs on Zoom too, so if people get on my email list, I send them the invitation and it includes the in-person and the Zoom. So people actually, quite a few people, do come by Zoom. Oh, good. Okay, okay. So that's the that's the one. Um, that's the, the those are the speakers at one fifteen on the first Sunday. Right. And there's a second meeting. Right. When? We just had it last night because it's on the third Thursday of the month, and okay. we call it our movie night. Okay. So last night we showed, and we're continuing to show. Uh, a movie that is called The Search for Climate Innovation, mm. 
We show it at St. Luke's Episcopal okay. Church. That's at 124 Orchard, um, not, um, is it Orchard? I want to say Orange. Orange. Orange, yes. yes. Okay. And uh, St. Luke's on Orange Street downtown. Right. right. And okay. it's at 630 at night. Okay. And um, so we've been most recently the... The, the Search for Climate Innovations is a series that's actually coming out of the Great Courses, and it was developed following Bill Gates, the very wealthy philanthropist mm -hmm. we all know of, and he had written a book called Solving for Zero and, um, and did a movie, Solving for Zero, which we showed. The search for climate innovations goes into all the ways that Bill Gates says and his assistance with all kinds of technological advances say that we have to um, we have to innovate so that we can reach zero emissions mm -hmm. of greenhouse gases by 2050. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty quick. Yeah. Very quick. <laughs> yeah. Right. Of course, it depends on how old you are. If you're seven, it's it's a long time away. And if right. you're 60 or 70, it's just like that. Well, yeah. and you're right, and I don't think I'll still be here. No, me either. But, but I'm hoping that my grandchildren, great-grandchildren, sure. will be better off because we get if as much as we can to solve that. Yes. Okay. So there are, we are in our 70s, I'm assuming. I know I am. Yes, I <laughs> and, am. And are there, are there seven-year-olds in, in this group? Do, do children come? Um, well, that's a good question. We've had, we've had, my granddaughter, one of them came, uh -huh. and she's now 20. Four. Okay. Um, I should know. So she's a child. <laughs> Essentially. Well, we won't tell Excuse her that. Excuse me. I we won't tell her that either. No. No. Uh, actually, they go by them. They're a modern oh, grand. Okay. They are a modern um, gender fluid okay. granddaughter. So um, we have not, I think, had any actual children. But if some come, great. Yeah. Oh, you know, actually, that's not true. We did a um, program showing a movie called Youth v. Gov okay. that at, it was some months ago, and it was about young people who sued the United States government for jeopardizing their right to mm -hmm. life and the pursuit of happiness. Oh, wow. You are right. Uh, and it was a, <laughs> yes, it was a wonderful movie to see, and we did have some children come. They were probably 12 and up. Yeah. And, um, Right. So the, they, the younger they uh -huh. are, the more they'll stay, stick around and, yeah. I, and, and I agree. Yeah. Right, right. And by the way, our March speaker is going to be, um, what is her name? Um, it's going to be the... Um, now, I believe, president of the Placer High School Environmental Club. Oh, good. And uh, I will I, remember I had her them name on, eventually. On my, on my show uh, last year, and I was just charmed, absolutely charmed. They're a great group. Of, they of are a great group. And um, the... Um, I'll remember her name eventually. That's okay. But she's going to talk about what they're doing, uh -huh. and I hope a lot of the members will come. Yes. And I'm sure she's going to be talking about Earth Day because they do Earth Day. Mm -hmm. Did it last year, and they'll do it again this year. And uh, you're right; they're a wonderful group, <laughs> and they're the ones who are going to have to really live this. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, which climate change issues do you expect to work on? more most most strongly um well i'll tell you about some of what we have worked on maybe no, uh, that, that you expect to work on expect to work on okay things in our future more mm -hmm. okay um well one of the ones i'm really excited about and i'm going to introduce is food waste huh. because food waste I was surprised to learn accounts for 8 to 10 percent of destructive greenhouse gases. And most of it, of course, is methane. Mm -hmm. um, and methane is so important to work on because 
while it has a shorter half-life than carbon, it actually also is more intensely warming. So it creates more heating of the earth. Okay. So if we can reduce methane, then we can get a faster start on really cutting back the okay. temperature warming. So how can we do that? How, give me a simple way. Well, it is a simple way to begin with. If you cook, if you have a kitchen, and you handle food, then you're somebody who can contribute to reducing food waste. Twenty-two percent of our trash is food. Okay. And the average household is throwing away, at least in the U.S., fifteen hundred dollars worth of our food budget of food. <laughs> um, How often? A, a, a month? A year. A, a year. A year. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. And um, so, don't buy as much. Is is what the. Well, probably as much as you can, mm -hmm. buy what you're going to use and use what you buy. Okay. So there are now cookbooks that are especially geared to helping people to think about how we can use all kinds of leftovers, what I call the little dribs and drabs mm -hmm. of meats and vegetables sure. and fruits, and how you can turn them into salads or soups or put them in a taco shell or an omelet. Mm -hmm. So uh, just being imaginative, uh, we, can, we can use a lot more of the food. So There's even cookbooks now, by the way, that are giving recipes for, I don't think you'd need a special recipe, for banana bread that you make not only with the banana but with the peel. Oh, okay. Right. Wow. Right. Okay. So ways not to waste even banana peels and not to waste like uh, carrot tops, mm -hmm. which I tried cooking the other day and they came out delicious. Okay. Um, so eat, if you have, if you bring, when you bring food home, eat it all. Slow right. <laughs> right, right, over several days, right. but eat it all. Yeah. But another thing that can really contribute to food waste, I've learned about there are food apps that we download onto our phones, and um, customers download them, and so do restaurants. And say you're a restaurant that has buffets, but at the end of the day, you can't save and reuse some of the food. Mm. Well, we don't want that thrown away. One in four Americans are hungry, for one thing, mm -hmm. but also the waste is so bad for the climate. So the way this app works is it's called Too Good To Go, and people sign up and restaurants sign up, and then you connect them, and the restaurants can sell their, their leftover food in kind of surprise bags or surprise oh, boxes, okay. and then the consumer can buy it, and it's all at a reduced price. Ah. Okay. So the restaurants don't, they make some extra income. Sure. Customers get a good price. The food doesn't get wasted. It's perfect. Yes, it, it is. It benefits <laughs> everybody. Yeah. And let me tell you about the one you're going to really be excited about. It's called Oleo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Right. Okay, go ahead. And just like with you, what that refers to is uh, that you can actually give away this app you don't sell. Mm -hmm. But you can give away even something that's not food. If you have an, uh, something taking up space in your garage you're never going to use, mm -hmm. you could put it on Oleo and maybe somebody local will come mm -hmm. and take it off your hands. Mm -hmm. But also, say you have an orchard or you have a garden like I do, then if you've got extra fruit that's going to fall on the ground and rot, you could list that and somebody can come get your lemons or your mm -hmm. peaches or your apples yes. or whatever you have. Okay. Uh, whatever your food is, you can give it away. Okay. So you find that on oleo.com or something? Um, well, I don't have their website, okay. but you know, if you go online and Google Google food apps, okay. you'll find oleo Google, listed. Google food apps. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. right. And speaking oh. of restaurants and and food... Um, you you also mention on your on the website, which is again, ppoft. dot org slash pika p e c a. There's there's a the P, pika spotlight, and right. the last time I looked at at the pika spotlight, you promote the high hand cafe in Loomis for providing a sustainable leftovers box. Yes, and so yes. The, 
So how long will that be up there, and when will you... Well, I'm afraid you'd have to ask Barb Munn, who okay. is our very talented technological wizard okay. who does our website. Okay. And she put it on, and that just was a picture that was taken when, at the holiday, we all decided, uh, our, our church members, our board members, we decided we would go out for a celebratory uh -huh. lunch. And we happened to go to High Hand Nursery. Uh -huh. And we were happy that I, you know, I should have brought my, my leftover food container oh, with well. me. <laughs> yeah. And that's the best thing I could have done. Uh, and I'll talk about plastics in a minute. Oh, uh, sure. Because that's a huge issue. <laughs> yes. But um, but anyway, it just happened that that was her picture of the current um, iteration. I don't know what she'll come up with. But how often does that change? I don't you know, know okay. but I but think... It's, it's uh, a great idea. It is. And I hope people will go on to our website often and see what new thing is there. And by the way, there's a lot of great information there. She's also got all the current uh, church members and faith group members. And we may... I expect we're going to keep growing and mm -hmm. have more faith groups join us. Not necessarily Christian. Mm -hmm. Any faith group can join PICA. And then we, um, we partner with... Uh, we'll work with ideas and energy from any nonpartisan group that mm -hmm. wants to work together, by the way. Yeah. But anyway, so each So it doesn't other, matter if you're religious or not, if this is, this is a group that wants people to absolutely. help. Absolutely. Okay. You know, we just had a group meeting last night. Um, almost everybody there, they weren't, they're from the public. So mm -hmm. many of our members who show up are from the public. Mm -hmm. uh, whether they go to any church or not, I don't have any idea. Most of them, I don't think, are mm -hmm. even churched. Mm -hmm. And that's wonderful and fine because um, we it's need, the spiritual, we need people. it's the spiritual and the moral that yeah. drives hopefully everyone. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> at some level. Yes. Yeah. Okay. There's one thing I just want, don't want to overlook, Susan, because it's a great way to decrease food waste. Um, and there's a new law in California that grocery stores now have to give away edible food that they have been throwing into their dumpsters because it was maybe a day or two over the date, mm -hmm. or it didn't look perfect, mm -hmm. some blemish. Well, now... I talked yesterday to uh, one of our members who actually volunteers at the food closet, our Auburn food closet, mm -hmm. and she told me that they're going out and they're getting the leftover, the uh, edible food from grocery stores oh, in good. town. So they can disperse it to people who are hungry, and that saves a lot of waste, too. Oh, yes, absolutely. And helps the hungry. Yes. Um, so that's very important. And the other thing that has, there's a new law, is to do with cities and counties in California now have to, uh, they have to compost or in some way divert at least 75% of their food waste uh -huh. out of the landfill. So um, one of the things our group did is we toured, along with our plastics waste group that a lot of us also belong to, we toured the the Western Placer Waste mm -hmm. Management okay. site, what they call MRF, yes. and we toured it, and they're composting green waste, yeah. but now they'll be composting green waste and food waste together, okay. which then provides healthy amendments to the soil to regenerate our soil. Good. So Good. it's really a win-win. Yes, it is. Yeah. And California is being very progressive about this, and hopefully will affect the rest of the nation to make these legal That's changes. wonderful. Yeah. Right. Good. Okay, what about plastics? Ah, plastics. <laughs> ah, well. plastics. Uh, so one of the things that we started with at uh, several of our individual churches <coughs> was the um, informing our, our, our congregation about plastic waste. Mm -hmm. So, you know, first get plastic out of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And it's an ongoing battle. Oh, it is. Yes, yeah. I, don't, I understand. Plastic right. bags and, and plastic containers and plastic. Right. And, <laughs> you know, people just go to the stores and 
th unthinkingly purchase plastic instead of, say, a paper cup. Mm -hmm. But we've worked on that, and uh, I put up uh, at St. Luke's a big poster that I, uh, it was a poster, a picture of the earth, and I covered it with plastic <laughs> implements of all kinds to demonstrate the way that plastic is just, um, it's, it's polluting our yeah. entire planet mm -hmm. it, everywhere. So, um, the, but there's something we can do about that. Yes, because because one of the things to know about plastic that's very fascinating to me is we, since the 1950s when it first became available, mm. it has we have produced 9.1 billion tons mm. of plastic. 9.1 billion, and worse yet. Most of that plastic is still around. Yes, I know. It's still with us yeah. because it takes 500 years to yeah. decompose. But what can we do about that? So, half of that plastic now is single use. And that is one of the hugest, biggest things we can do is get away from single use plastics. Mm -hmm. Uh, for example, plastic bottles, plastic water bottles. Human beings are using 1.2 million plastic water bottles a minute. So don't, <laughs> don't so, use plastic bottles if you can possibly avoid it. And that's, it's up to us. And we can. If we bring refillable bottles mm -hmm. with us, we can fill them from the tap. And by the way, there are, that's healthier because in our drinking water, we have fewer plastic microfibers than we do in a plastic bottle. Sure, sure. So it's not even healthy to drink from a plastic bottle. Right. Um, plastic bags. We are using 100 billion plastic bags a year in this country. And, you know, that amounts to 12 million barrels of crude oil mm. that we have to take out of the earth and we know now we've got to stop doing that. We've got to leave it in the earth. So if we take reusable shopping bags with us, mm -hmm. or even reuse the shopping bags we got from yeah. the store, then we can prevent throwing away more plastic bags, which are not recyclable and end up in the landfill. Right. We learned yeah. this on our yeah. MRF tour. Yeah. Uh, so so the, the, the message is use less plastic if you use any at all, or well, re reuse it, or, or yes. don't use it. So the, 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 the motto now is reduce. Sure, if you That's can. That's the first. Yeah. Well, and for example, another single-use plastic is straws. Yeah. Well, do we really need straws? Almost never, no. really. Yeah. Yeah. And we are using a half a billion straws every day. Yeah. So, oh my! I know. Wow, so, Linda. You know, I was. We were both sure that we wouldn't get finished today, and we won't. We can't. Mm -hmm. But, but, the, and but we've certainly started. Yes. Started to yeah. share this information. Right. So, if you want to learn more about Placer Earth Care Action, please log on to ppoft.org slash P-E-C-A and take a look at the times when when the, the, the times of, of the gatherings, the, uh, the first Sunday at the Congregational Church at 1.15 and the third Thursday at St. Luke's at 6.30 p.m. Linda, thank you very much for joining me. Well, and thank you. You're welcome. For having me. Yes, and thank you for watching.